Gary, I honestly do not know where to begin with you. Um, firstly, when you, you do not have to have the detectors in the slits. Um, that's, an, that's an alternate form of the two-slit experiment. And you seem to have it backwards in that. If you put the detectors in front of the slits, then the particles behave like particles. It's when there is no detector that they behave as waves. And you say that the, the particle is interacting with particles that have yet to be there and with particles that were already there. The thing is, this apparatus is on the Earth. If it takes three days for all the particles to fire, it's not in the same place in space. It's moved. It's moving in a circle on the path of the Earth. So how are these traces being made? Okay, that, that's your interpretation. Now, the, the quantum mechanical interpretation is that the single particle went through both slits and interfered with itself. And you don't seem to understand either that... Um, in the, in the particle wave duality, you know, like you said, that, that the photon classically should be a particle. Well, no, because it has these wave-like structures. Nobody really understands how you can have a particle that also behaves like a wave. That, that's a whole other weird thing, particle wave duality. But insofar as the electron is a wave, you know, the issue there is if the wave was really just some sort of statistical analysis to handle air, then you wouldn't see it interfere with itself but you do see it interfere with itself. No, it's not interfering with particles from all of history. It's interfering with itself at the same time. It makes no sense that it's interfering with things out of history. That, that's weirder than anything in quantum mechanics. That's much more weird than the idea that the electrons are, are probability waves. You know, and the, the thing of, about them being probability waves is it's just some field that correlates to probability okay and when you see wave-like behaviors in a particle you know you have to explain those things and you talk about oh you can't see the particle you can't it's funny I want to do a video on how we now can see atoms thanks to quantum mechanical principles used to build a tunneling microscope but it's sort of beside the point but um but the thing is, when the particle hits a screen, the target, it makes a little dot. You know, if it's, if it's a photon, you can use photographic paper. You know, if it's an electron, you can use a phosphor screen or some other way to sh for there to be a mark left when the particle hits. That's how you, quote unquote, see the particle. Now, yeah, if you can assume that all the electrons that are ever going to be fired are somehow communicating with each other across time. Yeah, you could explain, you could, you could try to use that explanation rather than the idea that the electron is a wave, hits both slits, and then the w parts of the wave interfere with itself. You, you, can, you can have this other time-traveling alternative, but I fail to see how that would make more sense or be more common sense than the idea that if you see two things interacting at the same time, there's two things there, and if there's only one, then the one is acting as two. Okay. Um, and you don't even need to consider the, the versions of the experiment that put detectors in there until you understand the version that doesn't.